when the COVID-19 pandemic began, we began to realize that there was a higher mortality rate with patients who had CLL who developed COVID-19. Um, and this also resulted in greater risk of hospitalization. Um, and this is because of a couple of different things. Patients with CLL have um, innate defects in their immune system. And there are multiple aspects of their immune system that can be infected, affected, including B cell um, function and T cell response, as well as other things like neutrophil function and complement. CLL patients waited eagerly for the vaccines to be authorized. Um, but the reality is, you know, because of their innate immune dysfunction, patients with CLL were excluded from the original vaccine studies. And we weren't sure how well these vaccines would work for patients with CLL, not only due to their innate immune dysfunction, but also due to some of the directed uh, B cell directed therapies that they receive. So we previously have looked at this and shown that patients are receiving various different types of B cell directed therapies, including BTK inhibitors, BCL2 inhibitors, have lower serologic or antibody responses to the COVID-19 vaccine. This was a prospective observational study um, enrolling patients from over 10 different academic centers across the United States. Um, patients with CLL were, who, who were, were eligible. Um, at enrollment, patients must not have had a known COVID-19 infection. And we enrolled patients into two different cohorts. One was into the initial cohort, so patients who were um, initially vaccinated. And we enrolled patients into a booster cohort for patients who um, received the subsequently authorized booster vaccine. In the initial cohort, we had about 202 patients enrolled. In the booster cohort, we had 114 patients. And we had patients report um, infections with COVID-19. And what we found is in the initial cohort, um, and this was over a period of time from initial vaccination until the receipt of a subsequent booster, we found that the incidence of COVID-19 infections was 3.3%. So eight of 202 patients developed COVID-19. Of those eight, 38% were hospitalized. And the median length of hospitalization was eight days, but ranged up to 30 days. Um, the majority of these patients did receive COVID-directed therapy. And of these eight patients, three subsequently died as a result of COVID. So the mortality rate was 38%. In the booster cohort, 32 of the 114 patients developed COVID after receipt of the booster. So that's an incidence of 25%. 13% of patients were hospitalized as a result of their COVID-19 infection. So lower than what we saw in the initial cohort. And the median length of hospitalization was three days, um, but ranged up to nine. So again, shorter numerically than in the initial cohort. Um, and interestingly, we did not see any deaths related to COVID-19. When we looked at the initial cohort, all of the infections occurred in patients either prior to the receipt of Evashield prophylaxis or in patients who did not receive prophylaxis. As a reminder, Evashield is no longer authorized for these patients, which is no longer thought to be effective to the current circulating variant. And several clinical features were evaluated as potential risk factors for infection, including age, um, anti-S levels, so that's the sp spike antibody level, treatment, gender, vaccine brand. None of these were found to be statistically predictive of infection. However, increasing values of anti-S levels were associated with a numerically decreased probability of infection in both cohorts, meaning if you had a higher spike antibody level, that seemed to be associated, at least trended, with a decreased risk of infection. And again, those anti-spike um, antibody levels reflect um, response to the vaccination. So moving forward, I think what patients from CLL need to understand is that while we may be out of pandemic status, COVID-19 is still an issue. Um, there are circulating variants. Patients with CLL are still vulnerable to them. Um, if you are on B cell directed therapy, so that includes again BCK inhibitors, venetoclax, um, obinutuzumab, rituximab, and if you receive one of the newer SARS CoV 2 vaccines, um, there's a chance that it won't be effective for you. Um, we also see the incidence of COVID 19 infections rising over time, especially in this booster cohort, and that's due to a couple different reasons um, the emergence of new variants. Um, as well as the reduction of social distancing practices. I think we've 
many of us have stopped masking as vigilantly as we did a few years ago. Um, you know, we have come a, a long way in terms of our supportive care for these patients, antiviral therapy, supporting people in the hospital, uh, improved measures in terms of supporting people through critical illness. So we are able to improve mortality with COVID-19, but the reality is patients must continue to be very uh, vigilant and aware of COVID, of the COVID-19 infection.